again guys and welcome back to Big Al's Big Weapons and in this video I'm going to show you an overview of how to sharpen a weapon to, if you want it, razor sharpness and all by hand. Okay, now I've been collecting assault weapons for just about a year so far, so I haven't been doing it for that long. And at the beginning, I thought that you sharpened weapons literally with just a whetstone and nothing else. Because, well, Hollywood, you, you watch the medieval knights with their swords, they've all got that stone, and they're sharpening it with a whetstone. But there's a lot more to sharpening a weapon uh, than, than I first thought. And over the last year, I've picked up a variety of techniques that will provide you with a razor edge to your historical weapon, if that's what you want. Now, this Dane Axe here, which I bought, um, um, at the, it was my first weapon I bought, um, was bought blunt. And I bought it blunt because it was safer. I wanted to practice with this axe and I didn't want to decapitate myself by mistake because, well, I'm a noob, I'm a beginner at that point in time. I didn't know how to use the axe and I didn't want to risk, you know, hurting myself by mistake. I mean, an axe, even blunt, will still hurt you if you get hit by it, but if it's razor sharp, it's going to do a lot more damage, obviously, than, than if it's blunt. But now that I'm more familiar with the weapon, I'm gradually getting it sharper and sharper. Now, um, what I will be doing in this video, as I say, well, I will show you on this Dane Axe um, how I created um, or have created an edge to this weapon over time um, through hand based techniques. Obviously, guys, if you have power tools and decide to sharpen your weapons with power tools, that's very quick and efficient and can produce a very, very, very sharp edge indeed. Um, but power tools aren't for everyone. First of all, I don't really like power tools. I don't, really, I, don't, I, don't have any, I don't have the power tools required to sharpen a weapon. Um, but two, it is also quite dangerous. Obviously, you can catch your fingers in there and you can, you can really damage the weapon as well if you do it wrong. So it's dangerous to you and it's dangerous to the weapon. And for me, I like doing it by hand because I find it relaxing to, to sharpen weapons uh, whilst I'm trying to just chill and relax. Okay? Um, and so if you're the same, guys, or you simply don't want to go out and buy a load of power tools you want, you've got a tighter budget and you can only spend like 15, 20 quid, which is what, like $30 tops, then that's more than enough to get you all the tools you need to keep your weapon sharp for life. Okay, and as I say, to give them a razor edge. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through each stage. And when I get to each stage, I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it so that you can understand the reasons why certain tools are used and what they do. The reason I'm saying this is because, well, I'm only a year of, you know, I've only been doing this for a year, and I may be doing certain things wrong, or there may be better ways. Or I'm doing everything right because I can produce a razor edge to my weapons, which is the whole point of doing this, right? But there might be quicker or more efficient or better ways or easier ways to do it, and I want you guys to be able to see why I'm doing it, why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it, so that if you know better, please share it in the comments and teach me. I'm more than willing to learn off you guys, as well as I hope that some of you guys will also learn off me. Okay, so the first stage is to file down your weapon. And to do that, you need a metal file, a flat metal file I find best. You can get different shaped metal files, okay? Um, some of them are circular, others are more triangle, triangular in shape. Um, the triangular ones are used to create sort of very acute angles on, on, on tools and stuff. Um, the circular ones are there to kind of like file in, in holes on, again, on whatever it might have a hole in. Um, but this kind of flat, um, chi flat, almost chisel shaped file is the one that I find the best and it's particularly good for swords also. Um, you could argue the triangle based one um, is okay for axes. Um, but again, this is more than enough than what you need. And as I say, if you're on a tight budget, this costs me a fiver. Okay, which is about seven dollars. Okay, and you'd be able to get it even cheaper than that. Um, so this is cheap, and it's all you need. Now, what you do uh, with this file is you create the edge of the weapon, and you create the angle of the edge of the weapon, and that determines how sharp the weapon is. Basically, the steeper the angle, the sharper the blade, but also the more fragile the blade. Okay, so in general rule of thumb, if this is zero degrees. <laughs> In comparison to my weapon, because it's going the same, along the same length of my weapon, then that is 90 degrees. Yeah? Now that's not going to sharpen the weapon at all. Okay? Because it's just going to blunt it. Okay? If I'm going down like that, it's going to blunt it. That makes sense, right? But if this is zero degrees, if I was to go 10 degrees, which is roughly that, which is not a lot, that's enough to create a point that can cut into things, 
So if you to have a target that you were swinging at, it's enough to cut into it and do quite a bit of damage, but it's not enough to cut your fingers by mistake if you were to draw your fingers across the edge. So it's not razor sharp. If you were to do a, an angle of just 30 degrees, which is roughly that, okay, okay, so roughly that, okay, if you were to do 30 degrees, then you've got a razor's edge. 30 degrees is a razor's edge. You don't have to go any further than that. In fact, I mean, going any further than that is detrimental to the blade because, as I say, the sharper the blade, the more fragile it becomes because the thinner the point of blade becomes. Um, you know, basically that, that would be 10 degrees and uh, that would be, sorry, sorry, that would be the other one. So that would be, say, 10 degrees and that would be, say, 30 degrees. And as you can see, the metal at the point there, there's more of it than there is for that. That's much, much, much thinner. So if you were to go at an angle of 30 degrees, you, you essentially decrease the amount of metal at the point, and as a result, the, the metal, the edge, can break. Okay? So if you want your weapons to last long, or be able to hit something that's quite hard, like armour, for example, and if you're going against an armour target, then um, actually a shallower angle of 10%, or say 20%, is actually better than 30 degrees because you're still not going to cut for the armor anyway but you're not going to damage your blade at the same time but it's sharp enough to still do damage so I'm going to start on my axe now filing it down at a roughly probably 15 degree angle um, and I'll show you how I'm doing it now the reason I picked 15 degrees is axes don't need to be sharp as swords if I was to have a sword I would do between 20 and 25 degrees angle Okay, but axes don't need to be as sharp as swords. So I'm going to go for roughly 15 degrees. And as I'm doing it, what you need to do is it's a full length stroke up and down, forwards and back. Okay, and I do it across the whole length of the blade, across the full, whole length of the blade, like this, so until I get to the end. And then I flip it over and I do the exact same thing on this side. So the important thing to know is you do the exact same thing on both sides of the blade. You don't want the blade to be lopsided, so you don't want it sharp, like, well, dull at that end and really sharp at that end. It, it's going to create a horrible edge alignment. So if I start now, okay, as you can see, I'm just going to do it quickly because I don't want you guys getting bored watching me file down a weapon <laughs> for hours because this process will take hours, okay? What you're seeing is just a brief uh, introduction into how to do it. This is, you know, I, I want you guys to be realistic and understand you can't sharpen a blade in 10 minutes, okay? Not unless it's already sharp. Um, it will take quite a lot of your time um, if you do it by hand. And as I say, that's the advantage of doing it with power tools. You can do it far, far quicker. But doing it by hand, you can customise the angle so much easier also. And as I say, it's actually quite relaxing. And you get a sense of achievement when you do it by hand also. Because you've done it all yourself. You're the one responsible. Sorry, I'm trying to angle it now because the, the blade's curving. Um, and I want it the, the right angle. There we go. So that's quite good. And you can actually see the edge starting to appear on this weapon. Because this hasn't been sharpened fully yet. I don't know if you can see it, but you can start to see the edge here, That's that, that light bit there, okay? So bear in mind, this weapon was completely blunt when I first got it. Now it's starting to get sharper already. I won't, I've not done a lot on it already. Um, what I'll do is I'll do another video at a later date when I've after fully sharpened it, and I'll use paper and stuff to show you just how sharp I can get it. Um, but that edge has started to appear. Now they say, General Wolf, just before we go to the next stage, that let the edge appear by itself. Don't force the edge. So as you're going, don't get impatient and try and, oh, if I just go at a slightly sharper angle, if I speed things up, I'll get the edge quicker. Don't rush things. Be patient with your steel. Be patient with the blade. Because when you rush things, that's when the problems start. Let the edge appear by itself. Just keep doing it until the edge shows itself. And that's, that's all you need to do. That's actually quite sharp. <laughs> I like it. That's quite, quite sharp. So the next stage, guys. It's whetstones, okay? So this is what I have done before on the weapon. And I actually got a fairly decent edge with this, but I was wrong to do it. I was wrong to do it. Sorry guys, I'm just making sure I've got everything before I start. I've put something down, I don't know where it's gone, but I'll find it later. So this stage, okay, you can get a whetstone that is like a tablet, 
okay? It's a big rectangle, essentially, and what you do is you draw the blade along it. You've all seen how they look. You draw the blade along it, and it's a rectangle in shape. Um, I have an axe, okay? So what I do is I use cigar stones, okay? Cigar stones are whetstone, just shapes like a cigar, <laughs> instead of a rectang rectangle. And they're better shaped for this kind of weapon. If you've got an axe um, or a scythe, not that you should really have a scythe as a historical weapon because they've never been used as historical weapons, but it's, if, you, for example, you want to sharpen your garden tools and you've got a scythe or anything that's curved, like a majorly sort of curved scimitar maybe, um, then a cigar stone actually is better shape than a rectangle for, for, for curved blades. Okay? Now what you do is it's important, and this is something I didn't do before, that you put onto the whetstone a mineral oil, which is paraffin oil essentially. Um, now this you can get from chemists, okay, um, and chemical companies and stuff like that. Um, but that makes the, the oil hard to get. I'm sure you can get it at certain building depots and stuff as well. I have looked. I wasn't lucky myself to find anything along those lines. But what I did do in my research, I found out that paraffin oil is basically baby oil. Baby oil is basically paraffin oil <laughs> the other way, but just perfume version of it. And so as a cheap and easy to obtain alternative, I just use baby oil. Um, obviously, guys, if you want to get the real thing, like the top grade stuff that, that, that chemists and that use, then feel free um, to, to go with that expense. But it's something that I myself am not willing to do. So I just use um, the basic baby oil. Now the reason you put oil on the stone, again that's something that most people don't know. This stone is not used to sharpen the weapon as such. It adds sharpness to the weapon but you're not creating the edge, that's what the filing is for. So I'm not going to do a lot with this because I haven't created the full edge yet. Um, this is more polishing, okay? So you use a whetstone to polish the weapon and to just refine the edge that you've already created with the, with, with the file. And the reason you put oil on the redstone is the oil acts as a coolant. Because if you were to rub the stone against the steel, you warm the steel up through friction, and that can mess up the tempering of the steel. It can actually weaken the steel because um, high carbon steel uh, should have been heat treated, um, and that gives it a hardness. If you heat it up again, you mess up its tempering. Okay, so the oil acts as a, lub uh, as a kind of coolant or lubricant. So it prevents friction, warming it up. Uh, but also, as well as that, it also protects the whetstone from obtaining metal within itself. So as you file down the metal, there are pores in this stone that can, as you're sort of kind of almost chipping away the metal over time, you'll get little bits of metal in it and sort of blunt the stone, essentially, make it less effective. So there's a double reason why you use oil. Now, unfortunately, Dane axes <laughs> are very cumbersome to use. It's, they're not as easy to sharpen as a sword because um, of their sheer length. I mean, the, the thing's about five and a half foot long. <laughs> um, five foot long. But then you would just, just like with the filing, you do exactly the same on both sides. Okay? Whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. Always do the same thing on both sides. And you just draw the blade along. And the important thing to note is it's not like how you sometimes see in the movies where you are drawing the blade in circles okay you are not doing circular motions with your wet stones it's forward and backward motions and the, and there's good reason for that because if you go in a circular motion um one it heats it up a little bit more but also it's it just removes the edge it blunts the edge that little bit because as you go sideways in that circular motion, you are actually blunting the weapon. So forward and backward motions only. I haven't done it completely there, guys. One, because it's hard to do on on camera. I wouldn't do it normally quite like this. Um, but I, uh, I'm trying to do it in a way that you guys can see. But also because, as I say, I haven't quite given myself a full edge yet, but as you can see, 
gonna it polishes the edge as you go down. What I've done on both one side, I've done on the other. Now obviously again, that would take a few hours to do. Um, I don't know if you really notice a difference, but it refines the edge over time. Okay. So that's the second stage, and that refines the edge, and you can actually see where it's taking some of the metal off, which is good. Taking a few of the harder edges off already, so that wouldn't take too long. Now the next stage, and the third and final stage, or there's several parts to it, is to use emery paper, which is essentially sandpaper, but for metal. Okay. Um, I've got three types of coarseness here, okay, which is called grit. Grit is another word for how coarse the um, the, the emery paper is. I'm going to start off with a coarser one, which is a lower figure. Um, I think the lowest one on here is, is 40, which is quite coarse indeed. Um, uh, but then 400 is about what you want, if I'm honest. 400 is sort of the perfect amount of gritness to really just add that extra smoothness to the weapon, um, to the weapon edge. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm wrapping it around this block just to make it easier to use. Um, and this is the dangerous part. I mean, most of the time people would say, and this is the way you can do it, is you, you, you cut off a little bit off the emery paper, you put it along the, along the edge, I've got to be careful here not to cut my fingers, and you would draw, draw it along the edge, sort of, again, not circular motions, but up and down, up and down, you would go down it, like so. Um, but obviously, if you've sharpened the weapon correctly, you've got a sharp blade <laughs> and the only paper protecting you from it. Not the safest way of doing it. So I wrap it around this block and, you know, it's not as good, but, you know, I've got an axe, so my axe doesn't have to be as sharp as a sword. But it speeds it up. Um, and if you were to, to do on a sword, I would recommend actually doing it along the edge like I've previously described. But this is more than adequate to get still a nice edge to it because remember this is not creating the edge the edge is created by the filing and then that's refined further by the whetstone and this is just extra refinement this is just smoothing everything out and i've forgotten to count the amount of strokes that i've done there so unfortunately um as i say you've got to do the same on both sides so i'll, I'll roughly do the same on this side now um but I, I'm not 100% sure how many strokes I did there. I didn't do it alternatively either. So it's easy to see to make mistakes. But at this point, this kind of work is simple and easy. Okay. So I haven't exactly done a lot of work there. So it's not going to really matter. Now, once you've done that, I can feel that that is not jagged at all anymore. There's a slight jaggedness there, which I could refine out if I wanted to. But the edge is, is a lot sharper already. Um, but it's refined there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to try and get this to raise a sharpness for you, just to show how you can do it by hand. Obviously not in this video because this video is already nearly 20 minutes long, and we don't want to add five hours to it. Um, but over time I will do it, and I will do another video to prove it to you that you can do this by hand. The next step, um, once you've sharpened it, just make sure you, you clean your weapon down. And I've done videos on how to clean weapons, and I'll be doing another video soon on how to clean weapons. But basically, the important thing to note is that you have um, high carbon steel in your in your either your sword, your axe, or whatever weapon you're trying to sharpen, um, and that that steel will rust over time. And so, whenever you do any work on it, whenever you sharpen it, you need to protect your weapon from degradation, um, and you need to do that with a combination of surface cleaner and microcrystalline wax polish. polish sorry. Um, so I'm going to start with the surface cleaner. The one that I use is called Prelim by Renaissance. And I don't know any alternatives. If I'm, if I'm totally truthful with you, I don't know any alternatives. So it's not me name dropping <laughs> um, for, for advertising. This is just the only one that I know. And the reviews of it, by the way, are, are top notch. Everyone loves Renaissance. So um, it's what uh, a lot of uh, British museums uh, use on their weapons and their museum pieces, which cost a lot of money, obviously. You know, uh, proper ancient ancient weapons cost a lot. <laughs> and uh, they, they use this, this, this cleaning method on their weapons. It's how I researched it. So I thought, well, if it's good enough for the museums, it's good enough for my pieces. So 
I, I don't need to do it on this part of the weapon, the main body of the steel, because I've actually just cleaned it um, not that long ago. Um, but I'm going to do it along the edge because I've obviously got fresh steel that's been exposed there, and I don't want the edge rusting. So I'm going to start with my polish, and I'm going to use a lint-free cloth. Okay, uh, any tri cloth will do, but lint-free cloths are the best. If you just go on eBay and put that in, L I N D T free cloths, or you know whatever online purchaser, uh, you'll, you'll be able to find it with, or if you, you know, you know a, a local store that does it, then great, go to them instead. Um, but I'm just going to clean the edge down there. It doesn't take a lot, you can really polish it up, and it gives it, your, your, your weapon, a very, very shiny finish, a lovely shiny uh, finish by the end of it. Um, but be careful guys, the only problem with that polish especially, more so than the wax, is that it stains. It really, really, really stains. Okay, so make sure you haven't got nice clothes on. That's why I'm topless for this video. People sometimes ask, oh, why are you topless in your videos? Most of the time, it's just, well, I, I like my tattoos and I like to show them off. And I think if I'm doing a video on, like, Vikings and stuff, well, I've got Viking Celtic heritage and the tattoos represent that. Might as well show it off. But today, there's actually proper reason. <laughs> Not just sheer vanity. Um, uh, it's because I don't want to get my T-shirt dirty. Um, but then what we do is then we get the microcrystalline wax and we put that over the top. And what that does, providing the weapon's already clean, which it is because I've just cleaned it, um, that then forms a, a wax kind of finish over the top of the cleaned, recently cleaned uh, steel and protects it then against rust because it, it, it locks out the moisture and dirt. Because dirt's a problem as well as moisture. It locks it out and prevents... Uh, it getting access to the weapon and I'm struggling to get that in. Ow! Okay, so yeah, this edge is sharp. I've just hurt my finger on it. I didn't cut it luckily, but um, I've done a good job there so far. In, in 20 minutes, I've managed to create quite a, a sharp weapon um, from what was previously basically blunt. Okay, but there we go. Um, so that's finished. It will need to dry, but you can see. Oh, look at that shiny, shiny, shiny finish! You can see it now, can't you? You can see how much that uh, wax and uh, polish has done. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. I hope you find the video useful. Um, I will see you soon. Um, the next videos, I'm going to be trying to build my very own axe at one point. Um, uh, but I've also got a Damascus steel um, uh, Barry dagger, uh, Barry knife, even uh, on route. So hopefully you guys will be able to see that. Lovely. Last one. Bye bye.